please do not go up to your friends and be like toasting. Hey man, it's time to get that money in 2023, dog. It's time to- <laughs> you been doing anyway <laughs> man it's been time to get that yeah, money right quit over here making all of this extra conversation yeah. <laughs> and let's figure out a plan plan your work and then you work your plan right, right. and then we can toast at the end of 2023 and say it ain't time to go get it in 24 we already got it and we spending it behind the mask What's happening, my dog? What's good, family? Another damn paradise. You already know what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is the end of the year, bro. Yeah, man. Man, we look back several months, and we've accomplished a lot yeah. in a short time period. Facts, facts, man. I had some amazing guests, amazing topics, some viral BTM moments. It was crazy, bro. We Some of these goats that we'd had on, man, like, we did the damn thing, man. We did the damn thing, man. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And the first one that comes to mind, he even forgot his own story, Lawrence <laughs> Taylor. Because, you know, you hear so many things about how guys, some of the greatest stories, him, Bill Parcells, him wrecking a car, and you like, is this a myth, urban legend, or did it really happen? Yeah, man. And guess what? It, it really, really happened. happened. <laughs> <laughs> man, let's tee him up, man. Let's go ahead and go to it. Yeah. I've heard some of the craziest stories, and I'm going to ask to hear out of your mouth first. One of the one story I heard, I don't know how true it is. Okay. You was late to a game, and I think you was driving, I think they said it was a Ferrari. Yeah, but I got there in the third, uh, in the first, in by, before the end of the first quarter. <laughs> I got there in time. And where did you park the Ferrari? Did you park it or did you just leave it on the highway? No, I, oh, uh, you're talking about that story. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you gotta understand, hey, I had an accident. So I just, I left it on the street and I went on and, and flagged down the car behind me. Uh, well, a car that was passed and just say, hey, take me to the, take me to the, I got a game today. Can you take me over to the Giants Stadium? Sure, hell. Yeah, of hell, course. Right, really. And I left, I left the car on the uh, street. <laughs> Yo, LT, one of the best linebackers, best players, defensive players ever in the NFL, bro. He used to do, like you said, in the 80s, you could do what you wanted to do. Like, that's nuts, man. And to think about it, we even had another goat on from that era, Eric Dickinson. Yep. And Eric Dickinson, said that he was scared as hell of Lawrence Taylor on the football field. His first game, Lawrence Taylor threatened to kill him, bro. <laughs> kill him. Like, this dude was a menace, man. Hey, yo, man. Y'all, y'all check. And he believed it. And he believed him on the field, man. Y'all, y'all check this one out, man. Uh, man, I got a story for you, man. This is my rookie year. Uh, we, we, we like stories. We, we, we open up the season with the New York Giants. My rookie season, 1983. And... Um, it was the, um, I think a Wednesday. We we had we you know we talked about you know had a game plan on Monday, Tuesday's off day, and Wednesday they come in and say, hey, Eric, we gotta, we have a play where you going you have to block Lawrence Taylor. I'm like, what? I said, hey, I'm a rookie. I said, hey, I mean I can't block Lawrence Taylor. They said, no, well look, you ain't gotta block him. He's gotta get his hands down. But we got a play. We are gonna slip the tight end behind him uh-huh. if it's need like one or two yards and just hit hit Mike Barb over the top. I'm like, okay. I said, but I ain't got to block him long now. He said, no, he just, <laughs> no, he just, got, just got to get his hands. And I'm like, okay. i never forget it. I mean, I'm nervous. I mean, think I'm nervous. I'm a, this, I'm a rookie. And it's my birthday. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. I mean, I think it's a day after. My birthday was the day before the day after. No, the day after. The, the, the game was the, the on that Sunday. My birthday was the day before. So um, we go over there. And, you know, we start the game. Man, I am so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm in the backfield. I'm going to get on the field. My, my hands are shaking. <laughs> my hands are literally shaking on my knees. In the first couple of plays, you know, you got to get hit and you get into yeah. the game. So we get, get to the game. To the get to the floor of the game. The game going. You know, he cursing. You know, you mind. <laughs> you know, cursing and going crazy. 
You ain't gonna get no 100 yards on us. <laughs> I think I ended up with 99 yards. I had 100, but they tackled him in the backfield. Right. So now we're in the third quarter, you know, and, and the claim is the game is close. We're going down to score, and they call it, I call it the play. And so, sure enough, then Mike Barber slips past him. LT rushes. He ru I cut him. And I, you know, y'all linebackers, y'all don't, don't want to be cut. You don't, don't do that. No, you don't want to be cut. <laughs> I cut him good, too. Yeah. So I cut him. He gets up. He, and I'm walking back. So he grabbed me by my arm. Hey, you mother. Don't you cut me? You hear me? So I'm standing. I'm like, I'm not even going to laugh. You hear me? <laughs> what would you, what'd you say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I leave the field. <laughs> I go to the sideline. I go to the sideline and sit on the bench. We got a first down, too. They got a first down. I'm like, fuck that shit. <laughs> he said, where's the running back at? I'm like, fuck. Not me. No smoke. Eric, I said, hey, man. No. <laughs> uh-uh. I said, we said, what happened? I said, that man told me he's going to kill me and don't cut him. I said, no. I want to get Bruce. I said, Bruce, no. They laughed. I said, man. Don't do me like that. I'm not going back out there. <laughs> Eric, he, said, he said, look, Eric, he said, give it a few plays. I said, yeah, because I'm not going back out there right now. So, oh, man. you know, because he told me, I said, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, okay. I, said, so I, went, I left the field. Yeah, bro. So I said, man, I said, no. So a few plays, you know, the, you know, the game ends. I go to apologize. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about I want to apologize, Mr. Taylor. I said, man, I said, Mr. Taylor, I want to apologize, man, for cutting you. Don't be cut. I said, man, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> he said, man, I'm just joking with you. I said, man, don't do me like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Fam, what would you do if somebody on the field told you they was going to kill you, like the most intimidating person at the time while you was in the league? It might have been you. <laughs> I ain't worried about it because, what, man, we on the field. What are you talking about? What, you want to go to the locker room and get something? But for him to actually believe it, that's what made it funny, bro. Yeah, man, definitely, man, definitely. He has some great running backs, too. <laughs> that's classic. That's classic. LT, bro. Shout out to LT, Eric Dickerson, man. We had some uh, some classic running backs from back then all the way to our era, one of the GOATs. Oh, yeah. Edger and James, Shout dog. out to Edge, man. Made the Hall of Fame last year, man. Yeah. Yeah, he had some dope, dope comments, too, man. Yeah, he did, and... He said one of the most simplistic statements of all time. And it was ref referring to guys who make it in the league. And you'd be like, man, how he make it? But really, it's all about effort. Yeah. And that's one thing you really can't control. And I had to piggyback off of it because I was like, man, you need to say that again. Because sometimes we get caught up into, well, God didn't bless me with this. Or I don't have this ability. But. EJ said it perfectly. If you've come to work with effort, man, that right there alone can bridge the gap when it comes to talent. Right. And you can earn your space in it. But anyway, man, let's go to EJ, man, so he can talk about it. You may not be that good or whatever, but just give me your effort. How many guys in the league, they be sorry, but they got some effort. Effort, like, effort guys. There's some effort guys in the <laughs> league, and people are like, man, how he get in there? And that effort will get you there. And people don't realize the power of effort. The effort will get you in spaces that the skill won't get you at time. Man, say that one more time, dog, because this ain't even a football statement. Yeah. Nah, it's just overall. Just overall. It, the but power it's real. of effort. Yeah, it's like, just give me your effort. You give me all your effort and be receptive to somebody telling you, like, look, make this change. Make this. You're, gonna, you, you're automatically going to put it. just common sense. Yeah. You know, you're going to improve, you know, but you got some people, they won't even give you all their effort, and they wonder why they don't get here. They only want to give you their effort when they feel like it's beneficial, you know, mm -hmm. but you have people that say, man, I'm just going to go hard. They may not be as skilled. They may not have that it factor, but they're going to give you their effort, mm -hmm. and I'm going to always put forth my effort towards doing whatever, whatever it is I'm doing, not saying that it's going to be the outcome is going to be great, mm -hmm. but I'm going to put the percentages in my favor every time because the effort is going to be there. Mm -hmm. And if I'm willing to make these minor adjustments, I'm quite sure I'm going to end up on the right end of the situation. Yeah, man. Edge, Edge definitely dropped some jewels in that episode, man. Loved the, the fact that he, we finally got him on, chased him yeah. for a while, but Edge came on representing the youth. We doing it right, Edge? Shout out, homie. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate yeah. <laughs> Don't even be hate. You know what I'm saying? CP. 
Yeah, especially CP. But nah, man, Edge talked about the power of effort. And that brought me back to another guest we had on. He wanted the goats and everything, but he ain't really getting no effort, bro. Your man Chuck, man, Charles Barkley. (laughs) (laughs) Chuck said, man, what'd he say? It's stupid. You want me to come out here and do the same thing for two hours and hit somebody? Hit another man for two hours? It's stupid. He said, he gave he gave his uniform that <laughs> roll the clip, roll it. My coach in high school taught me into playing football, and I was like, "Okay, I'll try this." And I went out there for one day, and I was like, "Wow, this is crazy." Mm. And I was like, "No, this ain't. This no, this is crazy." I just ran into a dude. I was on the defensive line, and, and those, you know, those like the real, the offensive line and defensive line like real football yeah, players. Right. Like you getting hit every, every single play. play. Yeah. And I remember last time I, I was in the locker room, I had my head down, I was totally exhausted, my head was hurting, my everything about it. Coach, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'm like, wait, 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 we're not practicing, we're not doing this tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not doing this shit tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, no. And he says, we got practice tomorrow. I said, yeah, coach, yeah. Uh, I said, Here's my uniform. I'm not doing this tomorrow. This is just stupid. I'm like, I just ran into a dude for like two hours. And I'm hurting. And you said, we got to do the same thing tomorrow. I was like, and my friend used to make fun of me. He's like, yo, man, you play football one day. I says, yeah. I knew it was crazy 20, 40 years ago. You, They just found it out now. You're getting beat up and got all this stuff going on. I said, no, nah, man, this is not for me. <laughs> one day, one day, one day. I had to. I, it didn't take me many times to learn that one day was enough for me. So you pretty much gave the white glove service to your coach and just told him, "Look, man, you can have this uniform, this helmet, because I'm finna go over here yeah. and pick up this uh this basketball." Well, well, he did come back to me later. He says, "I probably should have put you at a different position." What position? <laughs> he had you at D line. He had me at D line where you get hit every play. You supposed to do the hit in that D line though. Well, first of all, you don't know the snap count, so you, they, so they have a they have a, an advantage on you. <laughs> classic, hey man, bro. classic, bro. Yeah, baby. He gave white glove service to his uniform back to his coach yeah. because he said it's stupid. I ain't never heard that one a day in my life. Never oh, practice for one day, bro. Oh, one man. day, <laughs> Chuck, stupid dog. <laughs> I mean, 24-hour rule. Yeah. He was like, we supposed to do this again tomorrow? One day. I've been spending out here two hours hitting this dude over and over again. And then he told you, he was like, the offense knows the snap count. Right, bro. Like, yo, (laughs) this dude is classic. Hilarious Chuck, man. Shout out to Charles Barkley, too. Man, that that was one of the more funny episodes. But we had another GOAT from the NBA on. It it was funny, too, man. It wasn't as funny as... uh, when you pulled up to the set with them hoochie daddy shorts on, though. Oh, man, come on now. <laughs> Dominique Wilkins It was just episode. the way I, you and Dominique, I, I was on, can't say that term because I don't like that term. No lies of the lies. Yeah, Spice had like, some hoochie daddy shorts on. I ain't had no hoochie daddy shorts on. <laughs> watch it, watch it, watch it. clip then. They were just the way that I was sitting. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you the wildest man. thing I saw when I was in training camp, Cincinnati. And I remember Bruce Kaiser went off. You could tell he was he was irritated. So it was special teams period. He just went over. He was just cussing and spitting. Everybody who knows Bruce. So he he got back. And I always he had them old school biker shorts. Like the ones and he you had. Got a, on? Hey, yo, set it down. <laughs> set it down, G. I wasn't gonna say that, but you did me too, hey, right? Hey, Spice got the hoochie daddy shorts. <laughs> no, I just did a good leg workout. <laughs> And my muscles cracked. I hate hey, you, know man. Right now, you know what? I was gonna say something. Hey, y'all, you know, you chill out, man. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Don't yeah. y'all get off me right now. Get in. They had kind of had some off man. Listen, man. I had a good workout right, okay. today, man. All right, all right. Okay. Don't blame me okay. for y'all right. shortcomings. Right. Okay. Coach, coach, did what? I ain't talking to y'all. You don't forgot what he was saying. Get off the show, man. <laughs> Yo, man, bro. Uh, I, yeah, 
I know it was it was, nah, nah, it was the way that I was sitting. I know it was back in the summer and everything, you know what I mean? So you, you needed a little ventilation and everything. Nah, but... You sitting on these leather couches, man. You know it creates heat. <laughs> no lies in the lounge. What what up? No lies in the lounge, but that wasn't as funny as that time that you as a rookie forgot your cleats. Huh, big dog? That that was just that was yeah. a, Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was an accident. It was. Hey, let's yeah. run it. Take me back to your. What about your first game now? My first game was crazy. Preseason game. Preseason, yeah. My preseason game was crazy. I think I was with New Orleans. Got drafted by the Saints. We played against the um, the Jets week one back in New York. So I had plenty, you know, mad people coming to the games or whatever. Um, everybody wanted tickets. So fifth round pick, not a first round pick. I wasn't copping tickets for everybody. And I'm showing my age, yo, this is like Western Union days. So I had to like tell people, if y'all want tickets, you know, them $60 per ticket and there's 20 people coming, y'all got a Western Union, my mom's the money. Because we still in the training camp. So I don't want, you know, I ain't got time to go be picking up Western Unions and tickets. So send it to my mother. You know what I mean? She'll make sure you guys are on the list. You guys have your tickets before the game and everything. So obviously I'm nervous. And, and you know how it is. When you're a rookie, the first thing you do is the vets say, okay, first road trip. What you got to do, you got to bring chicken. You got to bring food on a plane. But I'm still thinking to myself, like, damn, I'm getting everything ready. I'm going back to the crib. Got to make sure my, my fit is right. You know what I'm saying? Got the tailor suit by the boy. Remember the, the Swanee yeah. with the, the linen walkers, had the, you know, the, yeah. the, the linen fits and everything. So I'm like, I got all of this stuff to do to prep for the game. I'm nervous as hell. First preseason game, going back to the crib in New York. Bro, I unpacked my bag. Guess what I forgot? Your jock strap. I forgot to pack my cleats. Oh. My cleats to the game. I have no cleats. Hold on now. And it, I just want to say this. If you forget to pack your cleats, <laughs> that means they ain't bringing no extra cleats. Nah, they don't they ain't bring extra cleats back then. So I had to borrow cleats from another player that happened to wear my size. You know what I'm saying? One of the vests that's just gonna get in and get out. Did and they knew wear the same size. They, we wore the same size, but you know, in training camp, you, you your cleats, the, the shoes that you want to get wear, get molded to your feet, right? So the ones he had was mad tight, you know what I mean? Cut up my Achilles and everything. So I'm already out there limping before the game, bro. I get out there, and again, we in New York, so preseason, not a lot of people come. And when the game is getting boring by the time the, 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 the rooks get in, right. ain't nobody there. So my, my crew coming down from the nosebleeds, you know what I'm saying, to the, to the regular seats, and they start yelling my name, toe, toe. You know, head in the crowd. So I could hear it. In Meadowlands, I could hear it. So the people in the huddle like, yo, they calling your name. Yo, that's your, that's your fam? I'm acting like I'm ignoring them because you want to be locked in. You yeah, want to be yeah, dialed yeah. in. You don't want to mess up. So it goes on for a little while. And finally, bro, I acknowledge him. On the TV time, I acknowledge him. Yo, what up? You know what I mean? Yeah, New York in the building. All that. Hit the tattoo. Next play, guess what happened? Sprain my ankle. And those two little shoes. Two tight shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Cleat man, cleat man, yeah, that's you. <laughs> you laughing? You kiki kiki key, kiki. Key, key, you kiki key, keying key, key a little hard there, bro. What, dog? You, you. It was a rookie mistake. Yeah, you learned from that rookie mistake too. Yeah, you want to learn? Know who learned from his mistakes? Who? Takeo Spikes. On what? When you tried to tackle Warwick Dunn, and he <laughs> he gave you that <laughs> shook the shit out your. <laughs> he really <laughs> did though. He just jumped higher. Then I expected him to jump. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> well, we gonna talk about it. Run the clip. You ever went against this Joker? All day. And what happened? Because you know he be thinking he, you know. Oh. What you gave him the business? Oh, uh, listen, Cincinnati. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm running out of bounds. You uh -huh. know, I'm running to the side. And he dove at me to hit me while I'm running <laughs> up, and I still. I j jumped up to like in in the air. I was like, Takeo! <laughs> <laughs> you remember? I was like, in the air. I was like, Takeo! <laughs> I got down and we walking back. I'm like, what you doing? He was like, that's a, so he just couldn't even say nothing. Hey, bro. He caught air? <laughs> you made him catch air? All day. Huh? Man, why you dabbing him up, man? What's the. Now, let me tell you this, though. <laughs> let me tell you my version of the story. <laughs> What's your version? So this is, like, we'll mention this every, you know, we'll talk about it. So it really started our coach, Mark Duffner. 
Hey, hey, I'm telling you right now, this kid work done, I've never seen anybody get a clean shot on him. I'm talking about, bro, he was in there just stroking you big time. <laughs> oh. Pause. <laughs> but, but I'm just like, and the more and more I kept Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I right, Friday, I'm looking at film. Never saw anybody hit him square on. Mm. And I was like, Coach, I really don't like how you was installing that fear into everybody. Mm. Like, I'm going to take him out and you're going to see it. So <laughs> we get to Sunday. And I'm like, man, we got these damn bucks coming off and I'm going to kill it. Bro, they ran. It was a running play going to the left. And he was going. And, and you know, the respect, I respect everybody. Like, not everybody, but <laughs> I just wanted to hit him. So I saw him going out of bounds. And I'm like, man, this is my chance to really, like, put some wood on this dude. So he saw me and he was easing up. And I was like, I don't see nothing, but I'm finna de demolish him. Bro, he saw I wasn't easing up. He sped back up, and then he jumped out of bounds. And I tried to get him. He jumped up, and I just caught all air. Got him mud and everything go on in my face. And I get up, and I heard him. He was like, Takeo, Takeo, come on, man. What you doing, man? And I felt he made me feel so bad, bro. I was just like, get the Got <laughs> oh my God. Oh I went man. back to the huddle, dog. I, I couldn't even look at you, bro. Oh, I know. You were like, like leave, the hell. leave me the hell alone. Oh, man. I was so hot, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, why you ain't laughing now? You ain't laughing now? My that ain't hurt. Yeah, it <laughs> works, man. <laughs> Work does say everybody makes mistakes in life, right? You made a mistake trying to tackle that man, bro. <laughs> he just happened to jump higher than I anticipated. Oxygen. He caught air. <laughs> I was trying to clean his ass up, too. I was trying to get him. But guess what, though? What? If you think that was a mistake, somebody else made a mistake, too. Or did you make a mistake? John Abraham said, this dude here is a mistake playing against me on the <laughs> offensive line. He was like, he made it? <laughs> That's messed up, bro. <laughs> he took a <laughs> He took a shot. He took a shot. Then he went backhand on you, man. But I can't tell it like John. So let's go to the tape, please. <laughs> Did you ever just beat the shit out of the tongue when you went up against? <laughs> oh, I tried. He to just got. Time. He I listen. Let me no tell you lies in the lounge. Too, no lies way. in the lounge. No, I ain't gonna lie. Like, no he, lies he was, in the lounge. Roast this motherfucker. <laughs> you got a story, please. I hope you got. I can. Story. I can promise you, I ain't got no good story. You know, I can't remember shit. We talked about this, but I do. I do remember he he was shitty at Ole Miss. <laughs> and then when I saw him in the league, I was like, this nigga made it. <laughs> I was like, this nigga made it. <laughs> I was like, oh, he made it. So you know, oh, you know, because you don't really get to see, like, you don't really get to see people after you leave and go to the league, because you worrying about your reputation. Hey, then yeah. I see this cat come to the league, I see the one. This is him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, what up, too? What up, man? And I remember him, I remember seeing him. I'm like, oh, but I'm happy as hell, because you can understand, like, the SEC, you just automatically, you plan to get somebody, you see yeah. him make it to the league, you like, I remember when I played Mo Collins when he was in Florida, and then yeah. I seen him in the league, I was like, wow. I, you know, I connect with this cat. Like I said, yeah. even seeing you and seeing him. But I was like, man, I was so proud because I was like, he was doo-doo in college. Uh, nah, I don't. Not we trash, ain't but, nah, not nah. trash, but you nah. know, you was, he was an underclassman. So for me, you trashed to me. I would, so you, you feel what I'm saying? Like, like for me, like you was the smallest guy I ever went against in college. So, you know, I'm there like, you go. He, that, that, he like that, that, listen, I was, I was smaller. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I wasn't shitty, though, man. I made OSEC, man. Don't, hey, don't be, don't be, because you got me, you, you know, got me hot on the collar, man. You know, when I call somebody shitty, you know they got a long way to go. And I ain't saying that the <laughs> way. He had a long way to go. I'm being real. That episode was good, man. That was, that was a funny one. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. That was, that was a good one. And for the record, no, I wasn't trash in college. Obviously, I made it to the league. I had to do something right, right? But anyway, man, that was that was a good <laughs> that was a good episode, man. It was actually so good we had to make it a two part episode yep. because uh, a lot of cats hadn't heard from John Abraham in a while. So for him to bless us and come on behind the mask podcast, that was amazing. And he talked about some of the things that he dealt with after leaving the NFL. You know what I mean? Suicidal thoughts, depression, 
uh, mental health. And the most important thing that I got out of it, being there firsthand, was like, you have to seek help. You have to find a way to get better. You can't do it on your own. And I think it was amazing for John to be able to open up, share with us of what he went through and what steps he's taking now to overcome them obstacles, man. So salute to John, but y'all check this one out. When I see stuff about suicide, it, it really fucks me up because people think it's so easy. It's not, it's not, man. A lot of people have them shits, man. It's not, it's not as easy as you saying, well, you know, if you want to kill yourself, just do it. Nah, it ain't that easy, bro. You know, I, I, I used to get mad at myself because I couldn't do it. I say, because I used to think about my kids, Damn. but I, mean, I, I used to think about my mom. I used to think about, like, how people going to view me after this, you know what I mean? Like, am I going to be viewed as a punk? Am I going to be viewed as this? And I'm like, but I don't want to be here. Like, I'm not comfortable. Like, I can't do this. Like, what can I do? Like, what can I do? I can't stay here, but I can't go, so I'm just going to stay home. You know what I mean? I'm just going to stay home. I'm like, that'll be fine. If I stay home, I'm fine. I mean, as many, bro, I'm, I, I piled up an ass of pills. I don't even know what kind of pills it was. That's not crazy. I just piled up an ass of pills. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to take all these motherfuckers. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Which one killed me? Like, I said, well, at least I go out and they, they can check my brain and all that stuff. And I won't worry about that, you know? Because that's the main reason I didn't jump off my ledge. Because I was like, if I jump on my ledge, I might fuck my head up and then they can't check my brain. But I'm like, uh, like yeah, I'm serious, man. I know it's like, it's fucked up, man. I'm like, shit. But I, I piled them up and I was like, ooh, I'm going to do it this way. And, and, you know, then I had to get rid of my knives in my house, too. I used to have, I used to be a knife connoisseur. I used to love knives. I had to get rid of them, too. I'm like, I got to get rid of them because I used to go to the kitchen. And I'd be like, uh, Man, I, I tried to break my own neck, bro. I tried to do some shit like this because I seen it on a movie. I God damn. <laughs> hey, man, I tried it all, man. But because I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. Like I didn't want to go out like no punk, man. Like even even with the drinking and driving, like I was, man. I used to close my eyes. I remember one time my sight kind of fucked up now because I stared at the sun while I was driving. Who does that? Bro, I was driving. We, we used to not let you fucking drive. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. Like literally, the people wouldn't even let me drive because they were like, "Nah," because I didn't care, bro. Like it was, it was the point that, and I don't know what it was. So when I see, I'm telling you about like the people I see that didn't make it, and it's a process, man. Like it really is a process. You gotta, you gotta give up yourself, man. And like, yeah. like you can, you can say I'm doing it for my kids and I'm doing it for this, man. You gotta do it for yourself and you gotta believe in yourself. Like when I start thinking about how hard I worked to get to just be alive. Yeah, that was a deep episode, bro. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, shout out to John and fighting his battles, embracing them, meeting them head on, yeah. uh, overcoming the obstacles. He said he's still a, a work in progress, man. But for anybody that's having thoughts of suicide or, or depression, please call 988, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Mm -hmm. uh, seek help. You know what I mean? You're not alone. People all across the country, all across the world are dealing with um, mental health and dealing with uh, thoughts of, of suicide. So you're not alone. Make sure y'all reach out, seek help if you need it. And um, we we span the spectrum, you know what I mean? Going behind the mask from sports to outside of sports, entertainment, life, everybody has a mask, right? We go behind it. And we have even had Shanti Das on and she was talking a little bit about mental health as well, man. Yeah, she, she does. And she does such a great job with her foundation, Silence the Shame. Yeah. And uh, she's been up and running for quite some time now. One of the most persistent, consistent uh, friends that we have in our group. So shout out to Shanti yeah. for not only talking the talk, but she's walking the walk by not only raising awareness, but being able to utilize her gift of knowing so many people, people of status athletes, and bringing everybody together to hopefully create change. Yeah, most deaf, most deaf. Shout out to Shanti, yo. Sticking with the music industry, man, we even had your boy on, the Radio Killer. Killer. <laughs> My boy Dream. Yeah, yeah. What's no happening, doubt. dog? No man, shout out to the Dream, man. After we, we went behind the mask with him, you look at several months later, now he's nominated for six Grammys. Dang. Man, come on, man. Killing it. Man, salute, 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 Dream, man! That, all of that excellence. You know what's dope about that? He's called a radio killer for a reason, and Grammy nominated for 
songwriter of the year. You know what I mean? Beyonce, Break My Soul. Yep. So he's doing the thing, man. Quiet yeah. is kept. And it's loud in the music industry, but BTM audience, y'all may not know, but check out Dream's dis- uh, discography. He's amazing, man. For yeah. real. Oh, no doubt, bro. And he's quite entertaining, too. That's a fact. That's a fact. And I still <laughs> beat him in golf. Ah. Dream, you ain't gonna like that. <laughs> you know what? He it got is, me like It time. is what it is. It is what it is. I got him more than he got me. For sure. What are some of the songs, some of the hottest songs that you've written that a lot of people may not even know about? Oh, wow. It's so funny because they because there's no credit, then they wouldn't know. Mm. <laughs> At the time. Umbrella is still one of those songs where it, it's the craziest thing, right? Because we are sitting here and you're like, of course we know. Yeah. Outside of our culture. Mm-hmm. It's like, what? It's like, I could say single ladies and like, what? Holy Grail is another one of those great records that I that I love. No church in a while. I was, you know. I, I was mind blown when I saw that. Oh, yeah, that was that was amazing to be a part of. Um, Love on Top. Just one of those ones like, oh, really? I'm not going to even tell on one, one of my executive friends who's like a father to me and said, how did I not know you wrote that this mm-hmm. whole time? Shame him. <laughs> nah. I was like, how you not going to know? He said, man, I'm sorry. I was like, how L.A. Reid not going to know? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Yeah, man. Shout out Dream, man. He, he representing y'all, you know what I'm saying? DSGB. You got the ATL hat on. Yeah, right on, bro. You know what I mean? Atlanta native. There it is. Dream, you Facts. know what I mean? Even though the roots come from Carolina, but yeah. he spent a lot of time here in down south. There it is. The there Georgia is. boy. So got to show him some love, Absolutely. no doubt. Absolutely. Another cat that you, uh, excuse me, another cat that we had on, Garrison Hurst. Another, G. another DSGB, bro. You know what I'm saying? UGA um, did his thing, obviously playing ball at, at uh, up in Athens. And what are the things that that kind of got our audience in an uproar, though, bro? You said that UGA is the new RBU, Running Back University, and man, they got on y'all in the comments. You and G Hurst, they was like, "What about Miami?" Edrin James came on some of the posts at the BTM podcast. Uh, Willis McGay, he just laughed at y'all or laughed at us, I should say. Yep. Clinton Portis, all these cats was like, nah, Miami, USC, um, well, so many other colleges. They was like, UGA is not RBU, bro. I mean, how can you deny it? And I'm not saying, I mean, you look at DeAndre Swift, Garrison Hurst, and I'm jumping from different decades, yeah. like quality running backs. And I think the biggest thing, you know, when I look at it, you know, most times we try to take a college career and compare it to a pro career. Yeah. And you probably shouldn't do that if you're talking about college. College, right. But in this manner, I'm talking about a lot of the guys who left and came out of Georgia, like, bro, they still balling in the pros. Yeah, that's a fact. You know what I mean? That's so, right. like, I ain't got a dog in the fight anyway. And I, but I do like to hear what you got to say about it, though. Hey, hey you know why they got on you for real? Why? Because you a war eagle and you didn't mention Alabama. That's what a lot of the comments said, bro. I mean, they all playing second class at Auburn anyway. I'm just saying. <laughs> I literally have no dog in the fight, bro. Shout out. Bo Jackson, one of the greatest of all the greatest of all time. I with you, man. Hey, y'all did the damn thing, man. G Hurst has something to say. George is really the new running back university, yeah. right? Uh, yes. Go ahead and say it loud. Look at the camera when you say it. <laughs> Nick Chubb. Gurley. Gurley. Swift. Sony Michelle. Mm-hmm. DeAndre Swift. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a no This thing I left him out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my dog. Yeah. D Swift. I like it. He's on my fantasy team. Oh, yeah. So. He should be. He's definitely yeah, that's, legit. That's a bad dude. Uh, you look at even pre-era before them, uh, Robert Edwards. Terrell, oh, uh, Terrell Davis. Terrell mm-hmm. Davis, which, by the way, he was your backup, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rodney Hampton. Oh, oh Tim Hampton. Worley. Tim Worley. Yeah. Lars Tate. Lawrence Tate. Just passed, but Lars Tate. Yep. Rest in peace. Um, 
<clears throat> I can go back with some names you probably won't know, but as a Georgia people would know him, you got uh, Willie McClendon. He was my running back coach, but he went for 15 and went probably in bath behind Walter Payton. Yeah. All right. So with all of those names you just said, I give it to you. Running back university. Yeah. Where does Garrison Hurst rank amongst oh, all of those? You're going to go put me right there. The Dog Nation one in here. <laughs> Only time oh, on. Oh, man. You know what? Because it's a dog, we talking about all dogs running backs? Yeah. Man, we're in we a pack. Man, uh, you ain't no wolf, only wolf <laughs> running back. Right, yeah, we, we ran pack Saturday. Ooh. Okay, that's the end of the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Damn, G. Oh. Got you. Man, I couldn't call it, dog. I'm just, I couldn't call it. I, I don't want to put, I don't, I'm not putting me on the bottom. I'm not putting me in the top. We in a pack. I'm just going to call it. We all dog backs. RBU, baby. Shout out to G Hurst, man. We had some great guests on this year, 2022. But we had some ill episodes, too, in our BTM conversations, man. Yeah, we did. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if, if we ain't relevant, then what's the use of even showing up? <laughs> right. What's the point of going behind the mask, being yeah. in the lounge? No lies in the lounge, man. But some of the episodes I think that, that stuck out are at least above the law. That yep. was that was definitely that was definitely a good, a good one. one. We had social media that was crazy. You you hate social media, the battle of the errors when you went against Larry Allen. That was a classic one. That was a good one. Hey, bro, <laughs> I didn't want to be surplanted in the ground, dog. <laughs> that was a good one, bro. Um, and then one of the ones that really stuck out to me was racism in sports. That was a deep episode, bro, because it really told the dynamics of the locker room. And I talked about my journey from South Jamaica, Queens to Oxford, Mississippi, going to Ole Miss, um, some of the things I experienced. And then you talked about some of the things in your locker room during your day as well. And again, I think what I really want people to see about this episode is that is there racism in sports? It depends on the lens that you're looking through. You know what I mean? Some things can be perceived as racist. Some things might not be. But at the end of the day, it's really up for the person that's in that locker room to judge. And yeah, it is. And I think the the biggest thing or the best thing about being inside of an NFL locker room, or just a locker room, period, when it comes to sport, everybody has their different views. Yeah. And depending on which lens you're looking through, that can create your bias. Mm-hmm. And – the beautiful thing we were talking about using the N word in the locker room mm. and one of my white teammates, he asked me, he was like, well, well, if you say it like this, then why can't I say it? And then I remember looking at the comment, Oh, you won't let somebody tell you what you can say, what you can do. No, let's settle down. It wasn't about that. Yeah. It was about showing ignorance. It was about showing it's a difference from, attacking somebody with verbal words or using a word as a term of endearment. Yeah. And in this case, I didn't like how to, how it would I didn't like how the N word was being used as a term of endearment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you talk openly, you talk freely and you talk candidly. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes the locker room so special. So I chose if I'm going to address not just one of my partners or anybody who's black, I decided, you know what? I don't need to talk to you that way. Yeah. I don't need to address you that way. I don't need for you to address me in that manner. Right. So in, therefore, from that time period, it was like, ah, oh, it makes sense. Mm. So if I really want to get to you and show you who we are, like let's have some good open conversation. Yeah. And and let's let's make it be debatable and discussable. So um Let's have good, open, and honest, candid conversation. Let's have some discussion about it. Yeah. So that's what it was. Like, yeah. it, man, I ain't buying into all of that. Yeah, like, I feel you. At the I end of the day, man, like, you know, we like we dare to do a job, bro. Mm-hmm. And the best way that you're able to communicate with people, that's the best way that you should be able to communicate with them. Yeah, and I yeah. take the best methods. That's that's always been my theory, and I'm always going to continue to have that same mindset. 
Y'all check the clip out. I remember being inside of the locker room and we just conversing, everybody chopping it up. And I had this white teammate, he was, he was my locker mate and we were cool, still tight to this day. And he, he said, you know, he heard me using the N word around just casually. And so he was like, hey Spikes, I got a question for you. And I was like, what's up? He was like, so I hear you using the N word and why do you use it? Mm. And I was like, what the hell you mean why I use it? I use it because I can use it. What? Then he said, would you be okay if I use it the same way that you use it as a term of endearment? Mm. And I was like, hell no. You want to get your teeth knocked out? He was like, no, no, man, I'm just saying, bro. I'm I'm just asking for some understanding. Yeah. So if it's not, it's right, it's okay for you to say it to somebody else. But if I am to say it to you in a term of endearment way, but then it's not okay. Mm. And I was like, I got it. So from that point, that day, I've been very consciously or conscious about how I speak mm -hmm. when it comes to using that word yeah. or you are taking that word out of my vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it made sense to me. Right. Because he dropped something on me. It was it's almost like I don't even want to know if it was ignorance mm -hmm. to where you just did not know mm -hmm. and you just sleep. So for me, when he challenged me that way, it made me realize like, come on, bro, if you really want to see change, then live the life that you want to see other people living. Yeah. yeah. You know, and 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 that way you can't be hypocritical or speaking out of both sides of the mouth yeah. when it comes to like telling your why one day when this story has happened. Yeah. yeah. Actually telling the why right now. Yeah. And so for me, that really got me away from using the N word just period and overall. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the reason why I don't use it. Yeah, man. And one thing, bro, that I think is I've always said it comes with maturity, right? If you're not comfortable saying it around your parents or in any room that you're in in the business setting, what's the point of saying it when you're cool? Like, we we old now, you know what I mean? And if, if you choose to say it, I ain't got no problem. Like you said, just don't say it to me. Yeah. And I'm very vocal about that, as are you, with our friends, with our media circle, with people on social media that, that comment at the BTM podcast. I'm like, nah, we don't we don't communicate like that here. If you want to do that, go back to your page. That's cool. It don't exist in our world like that. That's not what we're about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, what I think is people should respect that. It shouldn't be met with resistance. It's like if I don't if I don't want you calling me out my name, you should respect me enough to not call me out my name. Yeah. And if you choose to call me out my name, now we have a different issue because that means you don't respect me. So that's what it's about. And I just think people really need to just woo a little bit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It just depends just, on the lens that what you're looking at. What out you're of. looking out of, you know what I mean? And speaking of the lens you're looking out of, towards the end of the year, this was in the media, in the news for like three weeks. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, <laughs> leaving Jackson State University, going to Colorado. And he was called everything from that, from the N-word to a sellout to uh, a turncoat to shucking and jiving. Like I, wow. and, and a lot of it came from our own people. You know what I mean? And, and you know, the thing that, I guess, disturbed me a little bit is how can it be good one week and because a decision is made, it's all of a sudden a different way you're communicating at somebody. It's like what 3000 said, now you in a trap. Just that. Trap. Go ahead and marinate on that for a minute. You stuck in the same place. <laughs> nah, man, but it just really, it showed me who people really are. Because I, I said this in the past, people show you who they really are when you stop doing something 
that they're used to you doing. So if you stop doing something for somebody, they're going to show exactly who they are because don't nobody do nothing for you unless they want something in return in either flesh or in gold. Same thing with Deion Sanders. He's no longer doing it, no longer coaching at JSU. They wanted something back in flesh. He's not there no more. People showed you exactly how they felt about him the whole time. Let's run the clip. I got to ask you, bro, do you think he was wrong for leaving, understanding that so many kids came to play for him at Jackson State? I'm going to say no. And the reason why is you played 15 years in the NFL. Facts. Three years at Auburn. Yes, sir. Four years at Waco, Washington County. Waco in the house. You know what I'm saying? Probably Pop Warner before that, right? Absolutely. Every year when we go back to do your camp in Sandersville, Georgia, your linebacker coach is there, right? Coach Cape, right? Coach Cape. Shout out to David Cape. You are no longer in this man's presence every day. As a grown man now, are some of the, the nuggets that he gave you, the lessons that he instilled in you, some of the things that he poured into you as a young man, are those things still with you to, uh, till today? They all are. The lessons. Mo- moving on to college, some of the coaches that you had in college, they're no longer with you. Some of them have moved on. Are some of those lessons, those nuggets, those, those things that help you shape you as a young man, are they still with you today? They are. So because these young men went to Jackson State because of Coach Prime, right? Yep. To continue their student athlete career. Yep. Just because a man leaves doesn't mean that those lessons leave. You have three or four years at a college, at a university, right? Yeah. I have several coaches, Coach P, Coach Nall, Coach Al back when I was younger, Coach, rest in peace, Coach Jones from my high school, August Mall High School. These these lessons, these things that coaches pour into young men, they stay with you, whether you're in the immediate presence of them or not. Name me one person that you've seen that has said, you know what, prime is left, that's cool, but what are we gonna do to capitalize off of this momentum? What are we gonna do to push this culture forward? What are we gonna do to keep the train moving forward? Because at the end of the day, it's about the students. Then it's about the student athletes. Yeah. Then it's about the, making the students and student athletes into professionals. Because only 1% of them, less than 1%, are going to be professional athletes anyway. So we're not even talking about the NFL. We're talking about real life shit. Where's the solution? <sighs> Woo, sir. Yeah, got you, got you. So this is my thing. And I've said it on the episode. Make sure you check out the full episode. Mm-hmm. Why is it that we have to put all of this burden on one man to save one race. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. He ain't Jesus. <laughs> hey, Seuss. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. So quit putting that extra pressure. You gave solutions in the episode. So yeah. if we really want to continue to make change and see prosperous kids continue to go up the, the, the ladder mm-hmm. with opportunities create more opportunities for the pipeline that's coming behind them. Prime ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah. We can jump in and continue to serve the kids. Yeah. yeah, Because you said it best. When coaches step into the arena, their lessons last a lifetime, even yeah. after they are gone. Yep. After your playing days are over, those lessons stay with you. Yeah. You know I mean? So if it's three years, four years in college, two years coming from a JUCO, <laughs> Like it doesn't, it doesn't. In my opinion, it doesn't matter. Like you're gonna have those lessons, and then it's on your next coach to continue to instill those lessons in you. Life is more than sports. You know what I mean? As much as we live in that bubble and we like we eat, breathe, and shit football when we play, at some point you got to leave the locker room. At some point you got to become a professional. You got to do something else. At some point the ball stops bouncing. At some point you can't tackle this strong, as physical as you used to. At some point, I couldn't block as good as I used to be able to block. All things come to an end, bro. Yeah. So what it is, is whatever that succession plan is, whatever's next up, they have to be ready to carry the torch. That's all it is about, man. Yeah, and just as if they're ready to carry the torch, we are ready to carry the torch in 2023. Facts only. So, 
we're going to end this on a positive note. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a little humor to it, which is totally fine because that's what we're here to provide. Please do not go up to your friends and be like toasting. Hey, man, it's time to get that money in 2023, dog. It's time to- <laughs> What the fuck you been doing anyway? <laughs> man, it's been time to get that yeah, money. Facts. Quit over here making all of this extra conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and let's figure out a plan. Plan your work, and then you work your plan. Facts, facts. And then we can toast at the end of 2023 and say, it ain't time to go get it in 24. We already got it, and we spending it. Drinking good, cold, adult beverages. Facts, true. Uh. Happy New Year, y'all. Behind the mask.